Hello and welcome to another video. This video is going to be all about my new sketchbook routine, what I do when I get a new sketchbook. So this is my old Strathmore mixed media sketchbook. I'm going to try not to say the word sketchbook a million times, but it's just going to happen. Um, you can see that this one's nice and thick, the cover's all beat up, there's lots of good memories, it took about a year to fill. And I hope I get through the next one a little bit quicker. <laughs> but that's not really what it's all about. It's all about learning and growing and having a safe space inside your sketchbook where you feel like you can express yourself and do messy things and do whatever you want. You gotta rip that thing off first. Rip, just rip it off. So the first thing I like to do is just open up the book and kind of break the spine a little bit. I just manhandle the book um, but I'm not a man, so I just person handle the book. I just want the sketchbook to know who's boss, you know, right off the bat. The next thing that I normally do is trim the corners of the sketchbook because I prefer rounded corners of my pages. And this may seem like a little thing, but when you're using a sketchbook for like months or maybe even a year, like the previous one, um, I, I just want it to be perfect. So I trim the edges, the corners with this little corner cutter tool i got it on the internet by typing into the search browser corner cutter tool corner rounder and then i purchased one it was about twenty dollars which seems like a lot but i round all the freaking corners of all the papers that i have i not a sharp corner in sight nowhere to be found then i'm just gonna write my name and my email and the date that i started the sketchbook in the front cover this one doesn't have like a handy little um, space for it like the moleskin does but you know i just make my own and write it in there anyway you can see at the beginning of this clip that i am hesitant even to make this first mark just on the inside cover so that's how intimidating a blank page can be and if you're an artist or if you've ever tried to start a journal or a sketchbook you know that it is not easy to make the first mark inside of a beautiful blank book but that's what it's all about. Um, you gotta make marks if you wanna be an artist, so you gotta start with maybe your name. So now that that's out of the way, we can do the fun stuff, which is picking a sticker or a couple of stickers for the front cover. Um, I will tag the artist that these stickers are from um, in the little comment section thingy majigger. But the middle one is from Fried Meg, and then the little cabbage cupie is from my friend Julian Solace. Um, yeah, I really like this little composition. I kind of chose some colors that complemented each other, and then uh, this little holographic wizard rat that I love. That's from a local artist, um, and I will put their name in the thingy. Alrighty, now that we have all that covered, I feel comfy enough uh, to make some art in this sketchbook. So start off with some washi tape. I'm just gonna tape off a little square and I decided I'm gonna do a little gouache painting of a picture that I took the other day while I was on a hike. Um, so I do a little sketch in that red Prismacolor pencil. You can't really see it. It's a very light and messy sketch. So I'm using Windsor and Newton gouache, just starting with the sky like I usually do. Gotta leave some room for those beautiful puffy clouds. And yeah, this is the speed paint portion of the video. So I'm gonna stop talking and just let you watch what I'm doing. It's mostly just laying down big swaths of color. Paintings always start out looking weird and you kind of have to keep going until they look less weird. Um, so that's what I'm doing the whole time. Just like, why does this look bad? I hate it. I'm ruining my beautiful brand new blank book. I should never have done this, but I just keep going. And that's what you have to do if you wanna be an artist. You have to just keep making things and keep painting even when you feel like what you're making sucks. And at the end, I made something that I really liked. So that's a lesson for you and for me. I really like this round brush. It's from Simply Simmons, which is like the cheapest brush brand 
at the art supply store that I shop at. It's just a round brush that makes a really nice line. So that's what I use. putting some little yellow flowers in there because who doesn't love flowers? I feel like I have to disclaim that I use a couple of different sketchbooks at a time and this definitely is my like nice sketchbook where I do a lot of painting, I do a lot of mixed media stuff, um, but I do have several other sketchbooks that are more like note-taking, scribbling, um, doing, you know, ugly things that nobody will ever see. Um, since this book has nice paper and a limited number of pages, I do feel kind of a pressure to make it nice, but I think that's actually a good thing for me in some respects. Um, it forces me to make like something in between really finished work and really messy work that I find really fun and really, really compelling to look at as a viewer. So yeah, I just wanted to say that every artist uses sketchbooks differently. Um, some people use them as like a finished art piece that is gonna be, you're gonna flip through and every single page is gonna be a masterpiece. But for me, um, I work in like three or four books at a time, just depending on my mood and what I feel like doing that day. Um, and this particular book is more for finished, more like polished looking things. And even this is not, it's not a finished painting. Like I wouldn't consider this like if it was on its own piece of paper to be a masterpiece. But in my sketchbook, it's perfectly fine and I love it. So yeah, and I feel like this sets the tone. The first page definitely sets the tone for the whole book. Um, and what I want to do in this book is just kind of make memories. Um, so I'm glad that I chose to paint something from my life, a photo that I took on a hike instead of just like a random image I found on the internet. Um, I would highly recommend if you are a person who does art to take photos in your life and paint them even if they are messy and not photorealistic at all and like you can't compare them to the original photo. Um, like they're not identical copies, it's just like your impression of the feeling of the day without actually bringing your sketchbook out into the world, which is actually one of my favorite things to do. I don't always date my work, especially in my sketchbook. See, I've said the word sketchbook so many times, it doesn't even sound like a real word anymore. But I am dating this page just because it feels significant. It feels like the picture is a very May 22 picture. Um, it was a very May day out there. Um, and I want the first page to represent a time, a space, and that's what I'm doing. And yeah, that is how I break in a brand new sketchbook. I know it can be really intimidating. It can be scary. It's a whole beautiful blank book. And what if you ruin it? You're not going to ruin it. You can't ruin it. And never, ever rip out a page. Except unless you want to, actually. You can rip out a page. You can... You bought this. Like, you can... You can shred it to pieces if you want to. You can do whatever you want. Like, that's the, the point of having a sketchbook. And I think that's the coolest part is that it belongs to you and nobody has to see it if you don't want them to. I'm making a video on the internet and I posted this spread on my Instagram, but nobody has to see this if you don't want them to. So go out there and open up that brand new sketchbook that you've been saving and just do it. Okay, thank you. Goodbye.